I actually don't think there was a point in my life where I was not on YouTube all the time, constantly searching up and researching the next thing. I honestly think I've learned more from YouTube than I have my whole university degree or high school, et cetera. I, I really love YouTube. I remember starting to watch like comedy skit stuff like Shane Dawson and really loving that. And then I got really into gaming. So I would watch COD, Modern Warfare 2 commentaries. And then I got really into outdoor stuff. So I would watch outdoors videos. Then it was cars, cooking, vlogs like Casey Neistat. And eventually it turned into filmmaking, which is now my career passion, etc. I still like find different niches. Like I've gotten really into golf this year. So now I watch golf YouTubers like Rick Shields. I've also watched a ton of YouTube videos on gardening. I know I'm a dad, but I wanted to make sure my lawn looked really good this year. It's just such a good resource to learn whatever you wanna learn. I always put off making my own YouTube channel. Well, that's not true. I, I did make a couple, but in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how I went from almost zero, like I had a few subscribers, to a thousand in about six months. I've never actually found like a niche on YouTube that worked for me that I could constantly do and make videos for and actually be interested in. I was interested in cars, but how did I review cars when I was young? I was interested in cooking, but I wasn't really a great cook and I don't think that would have been very sustainable. And I was also interested in traveling and I made travel vlogs and those are still on my channel if you wanna check them out. But I didn't know how to do filmmaking and it's hard to do a travel vlog when you're not a great filmmaker, which led me into getting into filmmaking. I loved making these travel videos and I remember like nights in university, I would stay up editing for six to eight hours because I was so passionate about these travel videos. And then you'd post one and it would get about a hundred views. And that's like the most soul crushing thing ever, putting so much work into something that you think is really good. It's your, it's your best work that you've made and it gets a hundred views. Well, it's because the video probably wasn't very good. I, I, in fact, it wasn't. I, I really liked it because I love the memories and looking back at it, but I don't see how anybody else would find it very interesting. Now, the funny thing about this whole video is that most people watching my videos aren't subscribed. So if you're interested in filmmaking, life, business, travel, I haven't really fully defined the niche yet. I hope to travel soon. Uh, stay around for more content like this. I'll be making a ton of more videos, hopefully soon. So I'm gonna be talking about five different tips that actually really helped grow to a thousand subscribers. Now, I know a thousand subscribers doesn't seem like a whole lot. For me it was, because this is when you get monetized, this is showing me that, oh, you know what? I can actually build something and I've gained 400 subscribers over the last month. At the beginning of this year, I realized that the only way I would be able to take YouTube seriously is with dedication and consistency. After listening to Ali Abdal, he talked a lot about how just posting one to two videos a week for two years consistently can show amazing results. And, and you're not guaranteed to do anything. Like you might not improve over the two years, but the chances are you're gonna improve, make better videos, make more interesting videos and gain a following. After listening to this, it really stuck with me and I promised myself I would post one YouTube video every day, every Monday, whatever it was for a whole year. And I've kind of done that. I mean, work gets in the way sometimes and I need to be better at batching content, but I'm here, I'm making videos and the channel's doing okay. Now, I think the number one goal, the number one thing, the one thing that you need to do if you want to start a YouTube channel is consistently post. And it's the hardest thing to do. If you post a video every single week for two months and you're getting a hundred views each video, it's really soul crushing. And this is where a lot of people quit because they don't see the success that they think they're gonna get. And it's definitely an ego driven thing a lot of the time as well. I had an ego and I thought, oh, my videos are great. Why wouldn't people watch them? It's as simple as making one and posting it. It's not. And it takes quite a bit of consistency to really find a rhythm, understand how to craft a video, the pre-production, the post-production, doing all of that, it, it's tough. And there are gonna be great videos that you make that just don't get seen because the algorithm treats people like that kind of. Most of the time the algorithm should work to show good videos to people. And the other truth is that most of the videos you post are not gonna perform the way that you want them to. It's just the way YouTube works and then you'll make one video, like I made one, the first video I ever made has 40,000 views and it's reviewing a backpack. So I was like, whoa, YouTube's easy. And then I made a bunch of other videos, 100 views. And then you have these outlier videos that really pop off, they do well with the algorithm and these are what really helps build a following, build subscribers and getting your analytics to the next step. So the biggest like takeaway here is just pick a date that you're gonna make a video. If it's once a month, that's fine. Make a video once a month, but make sure you stick to that. And then you're gonna have a bit of a slower growth, but you're still gonna have growth with that consistency. 
So pick a date, pick a amount of videos, and just stick to that as best you can. Things are gonna pop up, we're humans, we're not perfect. But that is like the one key to drive home here is just post consistently, it works. The second thing is improvement. That comes with consistency. The more videos you make, the more you learn about filmmaking, videography, et cetera, you're gonna make better videos. It's just bound to happen. You're gonna learn how to tell better stories. I knew how to use a camera, but maybe I didn't really understand how to perfectly craft a YouTube video when I started and how to make it interesting and eye-catching for people to click on and retain throughout the video. I've always said that a finished video is better than no video at all, and that's because you need to put stuff out there. That being said, quality is very important when making YouTube videos. You want them to be seen, you want people to watch them. Uh, now this doesn't mean using the best camera, the best equipment. It means kind of telling the best story, making a compelling video. I watched a video last night, it has 36 million views and it's a tiny camera inside of a bird's nest. 36 million views. So don't worry about the production value of your videos. Worry about making a good video, compelling story, all that kind of stuff. Don't let perfectionism get in your way like I did and waiting to post a video and not posting it because it's perfect. I posted a video which I thought was gonna just miss. I thought it was gonna completely miss and it's one of my best performing videos to date so far. So post it, post what you're interested in, something's gonna take off. And make sure you're making videos for yourself. The other tip is just be yourself. When people start making videos, they kind of tense up and they don't know how to express their emotions the way they feel and convey a message to people that are comfortable with the camera. So I've been talking you know, from business school in presentations and stuff and that was really hard when I started. I wasn't good at it. And then I tried making YouTube videos. So I've been talking to a camera for a while and I'm, I'm kind of used to it now. I'm still not anywhere where I'd like to be. I'm no Peter McKinnon, I'm no whoever, Casey Neistat, whatever you want to say. These people are really good at being themselves on camera and just you know, letting their personality go. Don't be censored. I mean, don't say something stupid, but but let yourself be yourself. Sounds kind of dumb, but whatever. Being on camera is not a natural thing to do, but don't go and be over the top just because you see other wacky YouTubers doing it. I'm not gonna name any names, but there's a lot of people that try and go a little over the top with, you know, the, the entertainment value. Be funny, be yourself, but don't, The next tip is to learn how to make videos. Now, I know I said earlier that cameras, lights, microphones, they don't matter, but they do matter to like a certain degree. The story is way more important, but you wanna make sure that people can hear you clearly, see you clearly, it's not black, it's not fuzzy. You want a decent looking image. This was a little easier for me as I run a production company, that's what I do. But if you're not in that camp, there's a lot of great resources online. And if you're in the niche of my channel, you probably are interested in making videos. So this is not as big of a deal, but just learn how to make videos. Basic, like you don't need an expensive camera, but you should get something that's gonna look okay, a microphone that's gonna look okay, and then just learn how to edit. The reason I actually got into video production is because I wanted to be a YouTuber. I wanted to get into YouTube and I never did. And I think it's just ironic that I'm doing it now on filmmaking. Anyways, just treat yourself a little bit and learn and improve over time. You don't have to buy the most expensive stuff right away. Slowly increase as you learn more, etc. Now this is one of the hardest ones and it's the last one and it's what I struggled with for most of the time is to really not care what people think. Now, I've gotten over this to a certain degree over the years, but it's still there. I still care about making myself look like an idiot on the internet and friends making fun of me, family making fun of me, et cetera. That is a thing that's there. It's, it's, it's always gonna be there, I think. And you kinda have to get over that and just do what you wanna do because if you don't, you're gonna regret it later down the line. YouTube was always kind of like a niche place for gamers and, and people and it was a little nerdy. I'm a little nerdy and I love YouTube. So I think that is where some of the negative connotations with YouTube came into play. Um, it also could be like an ego thing, people thinking, oh, why do you think you're so good? that you could go on YouTube, et cetera. That's not what it is. As I've gotten older, I've realized that a lot of people that are gonna make fun of you for doing these things are just jealous that they don't have the drive to do them themselves and that you're actually doing something with your time. Like, I don't get how people have the energy to, to make fun of people for doing something that they wanna do. Even if I see something that's cringy. Oh! Ew! Dude! What the and I, I always kind of look and be like, hey, well, good for them for, you know, doing something with their lives and trying to, like, aspire to be the person they wanna be. And it might be cringy now, but later down the line, you might be jealous of them for what they're doing. I, I've seen a lot of this 
to happen in my city. So you never know. The other thing is just get a good group of people in your circle. It's good to have supportive people that are just gonna, you know, support you for doing what you do and not be like, why are you doing that? That's weird. Uh, that's a really big thing. Having a strong circle of people that are not gonna make fun of you, I guess. I don't know. It, it, it helps. So to summarize all this, I just think the best thing that you can do is be consistent. Consistency is gonna help you to just keep making more videos. You're gonna spend hours on a video that doesn't do well. It's gonna happen. Don't let that get you down. Your next video might be the one that does the best. So who knows? If you guys have enjoyed this video, let me know and I can do more videos kind of like this, the behind the scenes of YouTube, maybe the behinds of the scenes, the, 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 maybe behind the scenes of my business, etc. I want to do travel videos in the future. I have a couple trips planned, but nothing kind of too crazy, too serious. So yeah, let me know. I really appreciate you watching this video and I hope you got some entertainment value out of it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh,